uh, there's a lamb from my yard. I had to slaughter it on Wednesday, and then they fixed it up with, with mango inside of it, so Ed Kitty made it. So he has this thing, if the animal eats mango, then it gets cooked with mango. <laughs> so, Wally here has helped, he's volunteered to help us, and he's from the Master Gardener program. And at the Master Gardeners, how many of you, the Master Gardeners program, it's out of the University of Hawaii, and they're all over the country. And it's the idea of helping people become better at growing things in their yard. That's what they're all about. And while he's part of the, um, the grafting hui, and what they do is they work on grafting trees. And that's the whole thing is they work on grafting trees. And they do a lot of grafting in their, their, the Urban Garden Center is over in Pearl City next to the, the, um, the Home Depot there. And you guys, they're, they're, they normally have an activity the second Saturday of every month, which is today. So thank you for coming over, Wally. So Wally and I are going to do a little demonstration on, on how to graft. And um, anybody wants to try it, come on up. Okay, so maybe we'll start with the first cut. You want to start with this plant? Or you want to do, you start one and I'll walk you through what you're doing. Okay, so normally what you do, with, with most fruit trees, they, we call it grafted seedlings. If you plant a tree by seed, it will grow and that's what you end up with. But what your fruit comes out with, you never know what it's going to be. And it may take you eight, ten years to figure out what that is. Now, one out of, what I always tell people, one out of twenty is going to come up to be a winner. That one that won today is one of those, one of those things, because we don't know what that was. Somebody planted it by seed. But one out of twenty is going to be a winner. Thing is, if you graft onto this plant, you can graft the tree that you know is a winner already because you know exactly what it's going to be and you're going to get fruit the next year. So that's the reason why a lot of people graft. So most of the time you buy a, a tree from a store, it's called a grafted seedling. It's about, it usually takes, this thing probably took me two, two years to get to this point and then we're going to put a graft on it. So in three years you can get fruit. Because that's what we're going to do. So what you got to do is you get a, um, you get your rootstock. Now, normally when you would use your rootstock, you want the leaves over here to be sort of matured. You don't want a fresh leaf over here. You want a fairly matured one. Now, if we pretend this is a big tree, you know, who had that tree that was like 12 feet tall, you need to graft on top of it. With mango, you can graft onto a big tree. You know, it's possible to graft on a big tree and you can put something else on top of it. But generally, you want the, you don't want the leaf that just that's brand new like this. You want an old leaf. But we're gonna say this is an old leaf. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find a, one like this and then you're gonna take the cutting from a tree that you like. And what is this here? This is the Raposa. This is a Raposa. So we're, they're gonna turn this tree, which we don't know what it is, into a Raposa tree. That's exactly, we're grafting, that's what we're gonna do. So what he, he did is he took what we call budwood. And the budwood, you look at this thing and you can see little tips on this, a little bud on it. That's why he called it budwood. If you don't see the budwood, it's not budwood. And that's what makes it hard when you, you, you want the budwood because it makes it easy. So you're taking the budwood and what we're going to do is we're going to stick on. this onto this and we're going to attach it and now the tree is going to become a Raposa tree. Everything above that graft is going to be a Raposa tree. So go ahead and, and show us, walk us through and I'll try to comment along the way. Okay, basically on your scions, what you're going to want to do is, this is really a bad time to be, bad time to be looking for them because right now if you notice the fruits have already grown and they're at the stage where they've already bloomed and now they're at harvest time, right? So right now, a lot of your budwood's not actually gonna be on your tree at, at this stage right now. What it's gonna do is you got to wait until late September, early December, around then, when the harvesting has all been done, the fruit are off the tree, and now your tree's gone into budding mode now. Now it's gonna actually replenish itself and get it ready for the next spring to come to start putting out their flowers. So basically, we look for whatever bud, budwood we could find over at the garden. And there, was, there wasn't really very much, but we got some, just at least to show, you know, the presentation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and you're gonna take your scion wood and you're gonna try and match it up to the, the rootstock that you're gonna put it on, but you try and find where it's gonna match, where it's gonna come up to at least, you know, the same size or whatnot, which is normally about right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut that off. And then you can clean, go ahead and clean up some of the leaves. But on mango, you want to leave some of the leaves on them. It's not technically necessary, but they say for the mango, you should to help keep the keep the sunlight, the, the photosynthesis, and all that still going to the plant. But like citrus trees, you can actually just 
cut it all off. Okay. Okay. I have a sign on. Whatever. Okay. So you get it to where it's pretty much about the same. So we're going to take the drafting knife and you're going to make a cut and it's going to angle. We're getting, I don't know if you guys can see, but and we're going to do the same thing onto the, the scion, which basically all we're trying to do is just join them together. Yeah, if you want to, yeah. Did you pass a scion on one too? Because you can see sure. it's like that. Or the budwood. Well, we'll, we'll pass out a piece of budwood. So the budwood is basically a young branch? Yes. Okay. Well, our budwood is a young yeah, branch we're, we're that passing you show Yes, one that normally would just be coming out this year. It's just budwood. It's just so look the there, you see the budwood. The very tip, tip yeah. So when you're looking at longer. your, yeah. yeah, that's what's actually going to put out the new branches. Huh? Oh, and actually where the flowering is going to start. In, in other words, old branches will not... No. All your fruiting is all on the very tips of your trees, all coming from the new buds. That are just from, pushed out. From the old tree, no good. No. no. Okay. So basically that's, I guess, where your pruning and all that comes into. They destroy keep, them. Yeah. If they come. If they branch out from bottom, you don't want it. Um, depends if it's, if it's actually pushing out new buds, because yes, a lot of your leaves and all that will still be on the bottom, you know, and the branches on the bottom that will push out new budwood, you know. But you'll see, you'll find them all on the tips of your branches. It's not a flowering bud, it's a leafy flowering bud. It's actually both. Oh. Because that's where your, your the bud, the flowering of the fruits are going to come out as well. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, but at, at this point, you're looking at a vegetator. It's a leaf, it's a leaf bud it's that you're leaf looking bud, at. Yeah, in this case, you're looking at a leaf bud. But that, that is also where you're going to get your flowers. Everything, with mango, everything comes off yeah. the tip. And the, basically, the way, the good way to pull a scion would be, where if you look at your scion, you, and you're going to see all the swoll, swollen buds on them, which these aren't really that swollen, but you know, you'll see them. And you want to make sure when you pull them that the, that the greenery hasn't pushed through the bud. That's your perfectly ideal time to grab your bud with, you know, or to grab your scion. You said the very tip, you mean, you've got branches that come out? Yes, sir. Yeah, you'll see it. No, they have the bud as well, not the one that come out. Only on the very tip is where you're going to find it, yes. Oh, actually, yeah, on your laterals you're talking about. Yes, on your laterals, yes. Any of your lateral branches? Well, here, if, if, here I'll, I'll take a look right here. So if we look right here, and I'll just take, I'll show you, this is a branch without budwood, and you, you'll see the difference. And you, you'll see it, you, just, you can't see any buds on it. You, have any you can, but you're just your your odds are just going yeah, way down. Way down. Have any so but eventually, here? these will mature. That's it's the problem. Young. No, it's not too young. It's just the time of the year. Oh. So what I what so I do, 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 do is I walk around a tree. When do you do bud wood? What time of the year? Well, in September and November is usually a better time. Okay, so what we're trying to do is make sure everybody understands what bud wood is. So we have some examples of some bud wood out. And we have some examples here. You don't have any budwood, so you'll see that you got to see those little buds on the on the plant. Otherwise, you're going to have a really hard time getting there. Anyone not see the budwood? In here, take a look here. Anybody not see the budwood? You want to take a look at that. And you're going to harvest that budwood normally, like Wally was saying, when the trees are um, had a chance to rest a little bit and then they're ready to start taking off again. So normally, the the the, the fall of the year is a better time. It's hot summer time like this. Right when it's fruiting, you're not going to see a lot of budwood. Can you uh, put several budwood together, uh, different branches at yes. the same time? Yes. It's okay. So, so the question was, when you're grafting, like right now we're grafting a seedling. So you can, there's only one branch here, so you can only put one budwood on it. But let's pretend there was about three or four branches off of this one tree. You could try three times. You can actually take a Raposa, you can take a Hayden, you can put one onto one branch, one onto another one. This one's a little bit too immature right now, but I mean if you find a budwood small enough, you still can do it. 
No, you have to wait to do some grapples before you do them all one time. You can do them all one time. Yeah. It's, it's, I do it because maybe one will catch. Yeah. <laughs> Why I mean, the percentage of kitchen? That's that's the art. That's the art. That's the art. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, I've got the 20, 25 came off. That's not bad. That's 25 percent. That's a good percentage. That's not bad. It's 25 percent. And you know, see, the, the better the budwood, the healthier the rootstock, the more humid the environment, the better your odds. Is there, is there a limit onto what you can graft? For example, let's say the trunk was this big and the tree, the grafting arm was that. Can you graft a big? Okay, that's okay, that's where they, what they call where you can. There's a, like I said, there's a whole lot of different type of grafting that you can do. I mean, there's top grafting. There's you could use um, cleft grafting. What we're doing right now is a whip and tongue graft. You know, basically going on because with a whip and tongue, you want to basically get your side on the same size as the rootstock is what you're you're going on to. But like with a cleft graft, you can actually go onto an actual tree that's bigger. You could have a let's say you have an existing mango tree in your yard, and you're you're doing puri mango, right? But your neighbor has Hayden mango. So what you do is late at night you go over into his yard. <laughs> and you, know, you, you, you obtain you obtain a bud from his tree with his permission, and then from there you can actually graft that that root. I mean that bud bud wood onto yours. So you can take a branch like that. And what you're going to do with a cleft graft is you're actually going to we'll do one. We'll, we'll, we'll do, do one? one. Okay. We'll do one. Okay. Yeah. That. So basically, yes. You, and the cleft graph is actually used for when you're using a scion that's way smaller than what yeah. you're grafting Are on. all cleft um, graph, the bud, the bud uh, stock, is it always a young, tender, green one? It's always going to be your new one because... Woody branch. So it's always young, green Actually, tender. no, because if, if you look at all of these scions, right, because of the, mango, the way the mango grows, and, and it's always in stages, right? It's going to grow like it's going to have... This, this is actually what you would use as a as one of your woods bud scions, but it's going to be on the fifth year. But as this matures, your buds are going to get bigger. But from there, it's going to push out another one. So you're always going to use the new the new growth coming out. So if you have a tree that's already established and uh, you know mature, and you don't like its fruit. Would you suggest uh, Top graphing it, topping it, and starting again? So keep the tree no in the ground, don't right. kill it yes, off. Yes, don't kill it off. Yeah. And no then point. use it as a rootstock yep. and yes. exactly. graph it with a bit. Okay. What you could actually do is, let's say this is a really big tree. Okay, what you can do is either you can cut it down at the stump, and you're going to do top work from the stump itself, which will actually generate new branches coming out. Or you could actually keep, let's say, let's say this is a rapunzel. Okay, if this is a Raposa, what we're going to do is we're going to keep, I want Raposa growing. So I'm going to go ahead and leave one this side with Raposa, and this side I'm going to take your neighbor's Hayden mango, put on his Hayden mango onto this one and graph that. And now I have a Raposa and a Hayden mango growing on the same tree, which is really good for a lot of homes nowadays, how they were explaining in the earlier presentations, where a lot of our homes now have grown smaller. I live in Village Park. I have, and anybody familiar with Village Park knows that the yard is only maybe about eight feet that goes around the house, but I'm the one with 14 citrus trees in my yard, you know, and I have, I basically have them right along my fence area, and yes, I prune them and keep them, keep them small, you know, and they're, they're fruiting, you know, so, I mean, I'm not going to get bushels out of them, but that's not what I want, I want What's the difference between a dwarf tree and a regular tree? A dwarf tree basically is just growing on a rootstock that's slower growing, like the I don't know much about the mango trees for the rootstock for them dwarfs, but for citrus trees we use the hinaran, and the hinaran grows really slow. The rootstock, but yeah. the graft is a regular fruiting, right. non-dwarf. Correct. Oh, so the stock is a dwarf. Yeah. The, wow. Yeah. So, so the question, the question was, when you, you're dwarf, you're doing a dwarf, and what kind of rootstock to use? So again, we're looking at this situation again where we're dealing with the seedling. And so there is some effort people put into seedlings, and I know Mark Nickums gets into that quite a bit. Um, the practice, my practice is pretty bad, but the practice a lot of times is, is the, the rootstock sometimes does take a little thought. There are some types of rootstock that wants to get really big. If you look at these seedlings here, some of these seedlings want to get big. You can see there's some, they're all the same age. Why is that one half, twice the size of the other one? Because it's not a dwarf. Then why is that one half the size? Because it is a dwarf. 
So then you graft onto the dwarf rootstock, you're not gonna push up a lot. However, remember, the plant itself, the budwood, is where all the brains of the operation is as well. So the, if you got a, a plant that from the sign wood that is a dwarf in general, it's gonna be a dwarf anyway. So my attitude is, that's where the brains is. So I don't really care too much what the engine is underneath. But that would be a, another way to make sure that you keep a short tree. If you have an old tree, big trunk, can you have different mangoes yes. come out from the yes. same Yes, you can. Well, that's what we're saying. You've got the one tree, you can get like three different mangoes off that one tree. Because, I mean, actually, even if you start this, let's say you have all these branches on your existing tree, and you and you go ahead and cut it down to a stump, to the height of what you want it, and then from there, now you, when you place in place in your your scion wood, you're going to place actually whatever you want. You know? can, you, can you do a stump and you put your... Yes, house? around the stump area, you're actually going to put your scion wood into between the bark and the cambium layer. The cambium layer is what actually what you're going to need because the cambium layer is going to meet up with this cambium layer on your budding wood and so it's going to grow a callus. Around it? Huh? So let's say the trunk is this big, mm -hmm. mature tree. You can graph a bud like yes. that into it? Yes, to become no. a branch. The edge, not in the stump. You can go either way. What they do is if your branch, if your, if your stump isn't that large, you can actually take like an axe or something or something sharp and, and cut the cut the stump down right down the center and place your bud wood in it. Oh, I'm doing that. You're gonna do I'm that one right, right now. Do you and use then, root tone or something? Chemical no, no root tone. Because the it's, it's up to the cambium to heal itself. Oh. So that's why you have to meet and it's the same as this one, where I have to get that the cambium layer, which is right beneath the bark area, you're gonna see a thin white uh, cell membrane and right before the phloem and the inner part, right? And you have to, we have to match those to keep together. Wally, can, Wally, can you explain what the cambium layer is? Sure. Oh. Okay. When you cut your, um, when you cut your stem, you're gonna have the, the bark, right? Then right beneath that is another layer, and it's white, you, and that's going to be your cambium. <laughs> that right. does all of the the healing of if you mark if you accidentally cut into your plant whatnot. It's your cambium. It's up to your cambium layer to heal the plant to to seal it up to seal the wound up. Okay, and then on the inside you're going to see the phloem area, right? And that's just basically another part of the inner structure. Okay, but it's the cambium layer that you're actually looking for. So when you actually cut your Make the cut into your your plant or the stem. You're gonna match. Actually, when you saw it, you see what? Oh, okay, you see. But <laughs> before they looked at went around, you'll see like the green. You see how the stages? Yeah. You see the green mm -hmm. on the outside, then you see the white. white. It's the white layers that have to touch the white layers oh. on the same yeah. one. I thought you yeah. just put it anywhere. Correct. No, you can't yeah. just put it there. Not anywhere. And then, and that goes to where let's say, I my only option would be to use something this thick on this, which it's not. It's not, you know, yeah, but you know, but you can do it because all you have to do is you have to match only one side of the cambium, and that's why if you ever come across a situation where you can't match it, there's no way. As long as you match one side, and then you'll you'll catch. So the benefits of using a mature tree is the roots are established, yep. so it'll Correct. be faster growing. Yep. So you're saving years, right? Yep. Because right now you're looking at a plant that's actually still growing. So a lot of the energy is going into the rooting and the, it's going to go into the leaf making, the, the growth of it. Mm -hmm. And now you go on and add another sign on it. Now the energy has to also be pushed yes. into that now. So that's why basically what we do is we take a lot of the leaves off and you keep it small. And that way majority of your, your energy is going to be pushed into the scion. And once the scion blooms, then it can continue to go on from there. Now, does this grafting technique apply to star fruit, mountain it, it apple? It applies to every okay. fruit. So you're every doing general the, the grafting. The question was, can you graft, well, does the same grafting techniques work with other kinds of fruit? And yes. Let, let Wally go ahead and do that. And then anyone wants to try this, we want you to come up here and try it because that's the best way to do this. There's tons of this stuff on YouTube. You'll see a lot of examples of people doing this on YouTube. But the whole idea is, you're taking the brains of a tree that you really like, like the neighbors, your neighbor's really neat tree, you stole it. We're gonna go over to Natalie's place where she's got that one winning mango and we're gonna take what some branches variety? from that one. What breed one? What's that? What variety one? We don't, we don't know what it is. It's a, it's a tree that it's someone planted in their backyard and it's a really neat mango. That's why it, it, it's, 
That's why we do this contest to find unknown varieties. Now we know, hey, that's a good mango. Let's all go over that house and steal some of it <laughs> and take it over here. Now I got that tree because this is where the brains of this right. This right here is the brains of the whole tree. It's cloning. We're cloning. We're taking this from another thing and we're planting it somewhere else. The other thing to remember, remember, I'll get ready. One more thing to remember: when you plant a tree by seed like this, it's a juvenile. It's a baby. This is an adult. So this thing doesn't act like a baby anymore. This is acting like an adult. That's acting like a baby. So it takes a long time for them to grow up. You want the adult. Question? Your scion wood, what's the proper mature care for you? you have to okay, what you're going to want? Okay, okay. You, want, you want to answer that question? The question was about the proper scion. care of scion wood. Actually, what you're going to want to do is basically what I did. I took these cuttings about two days ago. So you're going to want to wrap it up in a nice wet towel or a cloth, paper towel. Put it into a Ziploc bag and then refrigerate it until you're ready to use it. That's, and it'll, it'll normally stay pretty good for a couple weeks. The, the key is not to let it get hot. So if you put it in your car and you park, the do and park it in a parking lot, not good. So, you know, keep it cool. Like what I do a lot of times, if I'm sorry, do you leave it like indoors in a, in a cool area? Or? My after product or? You know, after when you're storing this thing. When you store I leave it in the shade. Yeah. Don't, you put that thing out there in the sun, it's no good. So, yeah. so moist and cool. Don't put it in the refrigerator, it's too cold. Mm -hmm. So you joined it and you're just tying it. What yeah, you're you doing, know. what you're doing here, let me kind of get, draw this, what, what Wally's doing this, and I'm kind of draw the example. When you look at the spark, there's the bark and there's the wood inside. There's a space in between the two. That's the cambium layer. When you're doing a graft, and this is the rootstock, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some budwood nice and we're gonna take some budwood and we're gonna kind of match it up with this. And the cambium that's in here is right here. And somewhere along the line, these things are touching each other. And what Wally wants to do is hold it close together so it will grow into each other. So as long as this cambium, this, this, this area between the bark and the wood is, is the cambium layer. They're touch, touching each other and you hold it long enough, it'll grow into each other. But if you don't have these two talking to each other, you're not going to have any success. you got to get those two cambium layers touching each other. You have to understand also, once once they do, if you notice when the callus is taking place and they've joined each other, you, have, you also have to know that it's still way fragile because of the fact that the centers within the foam area, they don't fuse. Only the cambium fuses. So you have to be really careful with bumping that thing around. So because when you're the using a mature... Uh, rootstock that's maybe about one foot thick and you're putting little buds around it they're going from the outer layer to the outer layer of the bud right Correct. so you're not going too deep into that woodstock no you're staying on the outer surface right, right. so you've got a little tiny bud that's connected to a bigger tree with a well, bigger actually it's a difference tree. because when you say bud you're talking about just a single bud that's and that's normally like that okay this one with mangoes everything grows on, on the top, so it's actually, it's because it's a terminal bud, it's not, like on a citrus tree, you have each node is actually a bud, you know, so you can actually cut the bud, which is called bud grafting, you know, you can actually cut just the bud off and place it anywhere onto a citrus stem and the bud will, will bloom from there, versus a terminal bud. Terminal bud is where everything is basically on the top, you know, so you can't really cut out a bud anywhere from that. You know, so you have to actually place the entire terminal bud yes. onto So your the terminal stock. bud would go to the outer edge. Right the beneath the... You call it the cadmium? The cam cambium. The cambium layer of the bigger Correct. tree. Okay. So there, we have a DVD. Uh, we want to move on a little bit. We have a DVD that's back there, and it's. A, I would encourage you to um, get that DVD. If you get real serious about this, look into the YouTube. What Wally did is he just connected this thing and he secured it really tightly with, with some kind tape. of a stretching material. There's a lot of different types of we stretching need, uh, material. The construction tape. We can, buy it like low, we can buy it at Lowe's, Home Depot. They use it as marker tape. So it doesn't have to be here. No, it doesn't no. have no. What you what you're trying to do is you want something that can stretch and hold it tight. And that's what you can do here. Now, electric tape works. You need electric tape. Rubber bands work. Grocery bags work. Grocery bags work, I, yeah, grocery bag. You wanna stretch it and you wanna hold it tight because what you're doing is you just got this very thin layer of this plant touching each other and you need to hold it securely and it needs to grow into each other and you need to give it time to grow into each other and it takes a long time. So it can take, I would say at least two months. 
to get this thing going. And what, if you notice here, these are graphs that I've already taken. You notice it's growing, but they didn't take off the Band-Aid. They left the Band-Aid on. Leave it on. Well, I leave it on until it's like, it's choking. I mean, I want to make sure it's on. Because too many times I've taken off the Band-Aid, the wind came by and it broke. The rule, of, the rule of thumb is normally once you get the plant to flush itself up to about maybe seven to eight inches, then more or less in general your, your plant will, is pretty much calloused over and healed. Yeah, zip ties. Your, your whole idea is to hold this thing here. Now, this is the first step of the graph is get these things lined up and secure. How you secure it, there's all kinds of ways to do it. But the bottom line is this, you're securing it. Now what, now what he's going to do is this thing up here is 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 raw and it's exposed it is like it, you need to help it a little okay, bit okay so what you're going to do now is if, if you leave this the way it is now what's happening is this bud is going to transpire there's all the all it's the water out. and everything that's going to come it's going to come out and it's just going to escape through the top the buds so in, in order to keep it from doing that is you mentioned grocery the vegetable bags and all that that's what a lot of people do in the beginning when i started that's what i did i went to the vegetable stands over time from the supermarket i'll go grab a whole bunch of them right but you can come cut them up and strip them the reason they use those is because you don't have to replace you don't have to take those off the buds will break right through them because the plastic is soft enough but now they've come up with a whole thing using the medical field side which they call parafilm Parafilm is a waxy strip, and what we would do is we wrap it up. So go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. So what he's doing is he's just kind of sealing this thing up so it doesn't dry out. That's what his idea is, to seal it up so it doesn't dry out. Because Can we take a real quick question, Mark, in yeah. the back? Yeah. My question is, I live in Kaneohe. I, I was told to buy a certain type of mangoes that can grow there. This is hay they cannot grow. Can I graft the hay then onto that that will it grow or because it's too rainy, it still won't grow? It's still gonna be a hay then. You still gotta hate it. Because remember this plant from now on is gonna act like a raposa up here. Down here we don't know what it's doing, but up here it's still gonna act like a raposa. So what 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 Wally is doing is he's sealing this up and it's giving it it's 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 sealing it so it doesn't dry out. Now the grocery bag, the clear grocery bag people use because it's soft, the, the bud can come through. The wax will work. In the old days, they used to melt beeswax and they would paint it onto the tree on this section here to seal it up. The latest one I heard from Ken Love, who's part of our tropical fruit group, in Japan, they put Elmer's glue. Same idea. You all you, you know, just think about what you're trying to do. You're just trying to seal this up so it doesn't dry out. Now, anybody want to try this? Come up. Everybody's afraid. This is the open session part. Come on up. Run, but even if you don't want to try it, yes. you can come up and look. Yes, you have to cover the bud. You have to cover the bud because the bud, the bud is the, you want, we don't want the bud to dry out. But we do want the bud to keep growing and we want the bud to grow through the wax. But you kind of have a barrier that's too strong for the bud. You can even come up and look at your bud graphs if you don't want to grab it. Yeah, the clear one. We're talking about the clear bag, not the time, not with time, the clear bag. 